week three of the NFL. All eyes are on Mike Evans. He had a standout game one week ago with three touchdown catches. It's the Bucks and the Cowboys on Sunday night primetime. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. Hello again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gunn, joined as always by Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Cowboy team entering play. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. On the other side of the field for the visiting Bucks, it's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way. And we drop you in here under the lights. First drive of the contest. Here go, they begin with a run by Fournette. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The rushing numbers for Fournette from last week. 21 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. And we all know he had a big workload last week, so I'm eager to see if they decide to back him off a little bit. Personally, I hand it to him 20-plus times again. When a running back's locked in like he is, I want him to keep touching the football. And now a hook up downfield on second down. And he will step out of bounds here inside the 30. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 48 yards. We expected this defense to be tested by this passing game coming into this one. And there's an example on this first possession of the game. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Now back to throw. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans with career touchdown number 96. He joins Eric Dickerson on the all-time list. And the Bucks put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. A pretty big early test for the defense coming up. What can they dial up here to try and thwart this third down situation? Third and short yardage, Prescott. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Shaquille Barrett in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long. Oh, a dream scenario here as we get back into the action. It's a first and goal with the ball at the one-yard line. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. It's their quarterback. His 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the Buccaneers take the block field goal and convert it into six points. That touchdown, Charles, the first rushing TD of his rookie year. I don't know that he's going to be Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson or Josh Allen at this stage of his career, but he's got youth on his side.
This offense has been sustaining a nice, long, successful drive here. Now they're looking to finish it off. First and goal in the red zone. Fournette is into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great work, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word, if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Second quarter, this defense looking for a big third down stop here. They're already down on the scoreboard, just trying to get the ball back to their offense. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bucks take a three touchdown lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown? So the situation, it's third down in the third quarter, and this defense just trying to get the ball back to their offense to get back in this contest. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So this offense, they've made their way into the red zone now. They've got it a couple yards inside the 20 at the 18, first and 10. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he rifles one incomplete. Well, the incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you were think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead. But I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense got crowd the line this week. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Micah Parsons showing off that elite athleticism as he gets the sack. But just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously, led to a very quick sack. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your line and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, hey. you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. Going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Picked up by Leighton Van Der Esch. And the Cowboys are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. That's not one that he's going to want to remember, but he had to get it out of the way at some point, his first career interception. And if he's the guy that they think he is, he's not laughing it off, but he's also not going to let it affect him as the game proceeds. He's going to go back out there, still be the same confident kid, the reason that they drafted him, and go out and play. Dallas offense set for this next drop. It's a two-score game in the fourth quarter. Onside kick coming up, and the kicking team desperately needs a football. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here i just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like it's a third down situation in the fourth quarter time to see if this defense is up to the task inside handoff down to fournette and some room to work and all the way inside the 15 before they drop it the Cowboys going to use their second timeout now. And yeah, they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there.
Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Cowboys are going to take over once again with a football at their own 20-yard line. Those INTs all sting, but you throw one in the red zone. I think especially as a rookie, maybe it stings a little bit more. I think what you're saying is they don't all count the same, do they? Right? Interceptions in the red zone that you've given up points now, those are precious. So you have to learn from those and in a hurry. So Dak Prescott in the offense. Down by 11. A minute 40 remaining. This one's not over yet. A big play coming up on the onside kick with a kicking team trailing by eight. They need to get it back. And the Bucs are on this one. And that should just about do it. The risk reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, not that they've given up that type of field position. Ready up. 60 boxes, 60 boxes. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Evans. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. He'll look to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. And this is caught, and that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Now it's looking incredibly likely to be a 3-0 start to this season. That is obviously excellent. 2-0 is one thing. 3-0, you really have some momentum. And now they're serving notice to the rest of the league that they're a pretty darn good football team. Confident, aggressive, attacking at all times. This looks like a team that you're going to have to deal with. And guess what? Behind closed doors, they're trying to figure out ways to get better. And the lead is up to 15 now. A drive there of just four plays. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Pulls it in at the 13. And that final kickoff concludes the ball game, partner. And one side, a really nice win in this one. They were good on offense and on defense. And I'm guessing in the other locker room part of the head coach is telling this team, hey, we didn't play well enough to keep it close enough where that one possession down the stretch might have given us an opportunity to win the game. So for the Bucs, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they'll return home next week to take on the Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, for Dallas, they'll fall to one and two, and they'll try to rebound next week on the road in Washington.